Well, good morning from Mount Fuji and welcome to another video. This one's a little bit different because I'll be talking about social media. Now, before you click off, I do suggest hearing me out. Now, I've been using social media as a photographer for over six years now and in that time, I've made a ton of different mistakes and I've walked away with a ton of different lessons that I want to share with you today. Social media is a necessary evil. If you want to get your work out there, if you want to get your work seen, it's a must. Now, sure, there is a fraction of the photography population that can get their work out there and can get it seen without ever going online. But for most of us, social media is, as I've said, a necessary evil. And in this video, which I suspect will be quite long, I will share all the lessons I've learned, mistakes I've made, and basically anything I can share with you to make your, I don't wanna say journey with social media sounds a bit cringy, but let's say your experience with using social media as a photographer, more enjoyable, more efficient, and not as negative, let's just say that. Also, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, more on them later. In front of me there is Mount Fuji, it looks really cool. I'll show you right now. That is really cool, isn't it? What a day for it. And uh, I'll show you around here as well, hopefully. Okay, waffling, let's get into the video. The first tip is to create an email address that has nothing to do with you, your name, and no one could ever put that email address and you together. That email address you will use for logging into your social media only. It will not be a public facing email address. You will not give it out to anyone. You will not put it anywhere publicly. Only you will know it. Call it monkeyballs58 for all I care, as long as it has nothing to do with you, your brand, or your name. And the reason you wanna do that is because, well, the reason many people get hacked is, well, two reasons. First of all, they will get a spam email that's very convincing from Facebook, Instagram, whoever, click on it, that's it, game over. Second reason is their public facing email or an email that has their name is also their logging in email. So a hacker can easily kind of, at least if they have the right email, they can use other means of trying to hack. If your email address, no one knows apart from you and has nothing to do with you, no one can even get past the first stage of security, so to speak. And it's by far the easiest thing you can do. So first thing you wanna do is create a new email address that has nothing to do with you, never share it and only use it to log in to your social media accounts. I'm just in full overexcited teenage girl tourist mode. This place is insane, it's like a little industrial town. I forgot the name, I have to ask my girlfriend. It's a little industrial town uh, near Fuji and the mountain is just overbearing. You could see it from anywhere, but there's no tourists here. There's no one. Never mind about the uh, tourists. We were just in the wrong part. Just arrived in the main part, and this place is a shit show. At least we got our stamps. That's like level 10 tourist achieved by getting your stamps. And another stamp. Look at that. Lovely. The second tip is that you need to have a clear why and a clear reason for why you want to do social media. If you want to grow your account to half a million, do brand deals and make a ton of money, and that's great. If you just want to share a couple of photos to your mates once a year, that's also great. By knowing exactly what you want to get out of social media, you'll just have a much better relationship with it and it won't be as toxic as it is for many people because if you, let's say, you join Instagram just because you want to share a few photos of your friends, of your travels, but then very quickly start focusing on metrics and growth just because some guru in Dubai told you to do so you'll very quickly fall out of love with photography, with posting your photos. You'll just end up being a very toxic relationship. So my suggestion is to have a very clear why, because that will help you a lot in the long run. I don't know why I've just put this little frame here. I love it so much. You've got a little house, you've got a telegraph pole, you've got a tree with some Sakura on it, and of course you've got the mountain in the back. Um, I'll be shooting it at 55 mil. Just a vertical composition. Let me try horizontal. Yeah, I really like that. I think the Sakura and the little is what makes it personally. 
Next bit of advice is try not to spread yourself too thin by being active on every single platform. Pick two, maximum three platforms that you will dedicate all your effort to. So for me, it's Instagram and YouTube. Obviously, I also have a blog, which takes my time, but from a social media perspective, Instagram and YouTube. And then have maybe three or four smaller platforms, hopefully you can hear me, it's a bit windy, where you'll post now and again. And you might not put as much effort into them, but you'll just keep up, post a couple of things every week or so, just copy and paste from the other platforms. Because in my experience, if you spread yourself too thin and you try to do everything, what would happen is that the quality will go down and you'll get burnt out very quickly. Whereas if you just focus on a couple, then it becomes a lot more manageable. And at least in my opinion, that's how I've managed to keep my social media going. One last bit of advice is if you do come across any new and noteworthy app, create an account. You're not going to lose anything by creating an account, reserving your username and you know posting a couple of photos. Like I think Vero back in the day was popping off and I made an account, a couple of shots and forgot about it. And that way is if in the future, for whatever reason, that particular app becomes popular, at least you already have your presence uh, there. How lovely is this scene? You've got a beautiful sakura tree, clear sky. You've got loads of different colors and textures going on and the light framing everything nicely. I don't know, very simple scene, but this, I love stuff like this. The next point relates to spending your time on these apps. It's very easy to get sucked into it and sit there doom scrolling for hours on end. We've all done it. Uh, however, I found the best way to get around it is to batch. So for example, let's say if you want to post a bunch of pictures, then I would say an hour in the morning, go on there, post them, check, reply, do whatever you need to do. But try and do everything in that one hour, 30 minutes, whatever it is, it depends on your commitments and your time. And then don't open the app, don't check the app until maybe another hour in the evening or even the next day. Now, this advice is more for myself because I still tend to sometimes get onto it, but I am trying my best to limit social media to just an hour, max a day, go online, post, close it, and that's it. There are some people, I'm not joking, I've seen this, I can't remember where I've seen it, but, oh wow, um, Fuji's there, I'll show you in a second. There are some people who literally spend like seven hours a day on social media. I just don't understand how, how that's possible. But there you go. Uh, as for Fuji, I hope you can see it over there somewhere. Uh, we've actually took just a random road to go to a 7-Eleven, which is way out of the tourist hotspot. And so far for the last, what, 10, 20 minutes, we're the only people here and it's amazing. It seems like all the tourism in Japan is just cr centered around, you know, the handful of Instagram famous locations. And everywhere else like here is just, I mean, I would argue here is more beautiful because you see how actual people live, you see actual houses, cars, and the environment. Whereas back there, it was literally a minimum 60 minute queue just to get one shot that, or one viewpoint, which here, to be honest, is just as good. But that's for a separate video. Moving on, you'd want to make a conscious decision about what you keep private and what you share online. Once you've shared something online, that's it. There is no going back. I can't tell you what's right or wrong. Some people share their kids. Some people share every second of their life on Instagram stories. Again, it's up to you. Not my cup of tea. I tend to be much more on the private side, but you decide that for yourself. However, making a conscious decision early on in your social media journey, let's just say that, will definitely uh, pay dividends. You don't want to get into a position where you, you've shared your entire life on the internet only to then regret it you know, a few years down the line when your life circumstances might have changed and everyone is more interested about your gossip of your life circumstances as opposed to, let's just say, your photography. So this is the definition of an Instagram photo spot. I'm sure you've seen this on Instagram before. And this is what you probably don't see on Instagram. People trying to get that shot and jumping over each other. And there's literally someone here 
traffic, where is he? Who's actually employed to patrol the traffic so that people don't get themselves killed by jumping into the middle of the road. So there we go. So this is what it really looks like here and not on Instagram. Now, this one is very important. Stay away from gossip, hot takes, politics, and generally creating drama on the internet. Now, I'm sure if you make a video slagging off another photographer who might deserve it or not, regardless, you'll get a ton of views, people will agree with you, and all will be good, in theory, right? The problem is you're then known as the person who creates drama, who uh, has hot takes, slags off and all that kind of stuff. You won't be known for your photography, you'll be known for your opinions and you'll be known for the, um, let's just say, the drama and the gossip rather than your work. And you don't really want to be in that position. So unless you want to build your channel and your online presence and your Instagram account around all of that, avoid it like the plague. One of the things I find fascinating when I'm traveling to these larger than life, uh, photogenic, famous destinations, is that most people have this kind of herd mentality and they just go to one or two spots that they've seen on Instagram. So for example, back then, as you might or might not have seen earlier, if not, I'll show you now, there was complete chaos. There was like tons of people all crowding for the same shot. However, if you just walk a little bit further down, we're on the same road, the view is insane, absolutely insane. There's no one here. I mean, me, my girlfriend, one person walking down there, a couple of people sitting on their bikes there. Pretty much the same kind of shot as you if you cross over to the other side of the road. So yeah, when you come to these places, just by all means take one tourist photo that you've seen online, but then just go and explore away from other people. If you're going away from the masses, it's probably a good thing because you'll find amazing spots like this and they're all to yourself. I'd like to take a moment and thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I've been using Squarespace for over five years as my online photography portfolio, where I share my best work from all the trips and shoots. Having an online portfolio is important because it's your little corner of the internet that you can arrange however you like. I would also encourage everyone to start an online blog about their photography. Having a blog is the best way for your website to stay relevant on Google because there's fresh content always being uploaded. Not to mention it's a great way for your website to become more searchable through SEO. Squarespace offers powerful blogging tools that will allow you to publish blogs from anywhere on any device. Squarespace also offers powerful analytics that help you understand where your readers are coming from and what they're searching for. If you're an aspiring photographer, having your own website is important because it will elevate you from everyone else. For a free trial followed by 10% off your first purchase, please use the link in the description or use code RomanFox when you check out. Thank you for Squarespace for sponsoring and thank you for watching. To piggyback onto the previous point, avoid complaining and moaning online. It does feel good to vent about whatever it is that's bothering you on threads or whatever other app. And it feels good when other people share your frustrations, like, comment, and all of that. But realistically, always complaining about whether it's prices or engagement or, or clients, or I see a common one of photographers are complaining about other clients and all of that. Again, I understand it, but at the same time, it just looks childish, if I'm completely honest. Like these days when I open the Threads app, it's either the cost of film, uh, what else, engagement, clients, basically anything that can be complained about, people complain about. And just avoid that entirely. If, 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 if you're unhappy about something, speak to someone in person, maybe complain in the DMs to someone you might know. But doing it publicly just makes it look childish. And if you do have prospective clients out there and they come across your social media profile and the last thing you've posted is you're complaining about how a thir net 30 or net 60 payment terms is like a violation of your rights or some other nonsense, then it doesn't look good. The next piece of advice is to ignore and block trolls. When I say trolls, I don't mean people who leave respectful criticism I mean, just idiots on the internet who will 
just try and put you down, make it personal, insult you. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, as your account will grow if you're posting stuff online, it is inevitable that you will come across these people. What you need to remember is in real life, these people are complete and utter losers and they have nothing better to do than to try and bring other people down. And there's another side to it. In my opinion, you have to be a pretty mentally unstable person to be a troll. However, because you're already mentally unstable, it's also quite possible for some of these trolls to take it to another level. Now, there's one photographer that I know of on YouTube who literally had someone find where he lives and threaten him because they disagreed on something on the internet. Equally, about a year ago, I made a joke on Instagram about uh, film photography, and some very sensitive person put that on a Reddit thread, and okay, it was you know, m many people basically insulting me, which I'm fine with, but there were a couple of comments on the lines of, he won't make these jokes again once I get my hands around his throat. So, as, ni as, as tempting as it is to reply to trolls, to try and make fun of them online, to, and again, I still fall for it to this day, I'm only human. The problem is you're dealing with mentally unstable people, when, with people who have nothing better to do with their time. So mentally unstable, loads of free time. You just don't want to risk it, because these days it's very easy to find where you live, where you are, like all this information is freely available online. And yeah, you just have to be careful because you don't want to upset the wrong type of troll who might try to take it to another level. And I know it sounds a bit weird, but clearly this has happened to others and it's something that could happen as well. So if you get weird, stupid comments, block or delete, ignore, don't, uh, don't entertain it and put yourself in unnecessary risk. Next up, don't go too crazy sharing all your plans, goals or dreams online. We've all come across those photographers who are always posting something like, watch this space, something's coming soon or, you know, new YouTube channel 2024. We all know deep down that there's no space to watch, nothing's coming and the most level do on YouTube is update their profile picture. When you share your plans with everyone else, there's a high chance they won't really come to fruition. Instead, keep all your plans to yourself, keep your ideas to yourself, and only share either once they're done or when they are so close to being done that it's a matter of when, not if. The main reason for it is because you might have a change of heart, you might have a change of circumstances, and if you keep saying to people, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, and then you don't do it, I don't know, your word just becomes less valuable. So then when you share things online, you know, people might think, well, he said this before and nothing happened, so what's the chances of it happening now? Now, I've already mentioned this in the previous video, so I'll be very brief here. Don't compare yourself to anyone else on social media. Social media is smoke and mirrors. People are sharing the highlights, the uh, top 1% of their best bits. They're not sharing everything that's happening in their life. So if you're comparing your day-to-day -day life and if you're comparing your photography that you take every day to someone who's only posting one photo for every 10,000 they take, exaggerating, but you get the point, you're gonna feel bummed out because you're like, these people, all they're posting is amazing work and all my stuff sucks. It doesn't suck. It's just you're comparing, let's say a week's shoot in every single photo you've taken with someone else who might have shared a year's worth of work and only shared the best bits. So don't compare, compare yourself to yourself and you'll have a much healthier relationship with social media. Avoid overnight success and trying to go viral unless you know exactly what you're doing. I've seen it a few times where someone, let's just say, is a wildlife photographer Street photography becomes trendy. They post a few street photography reels because they just want those views. The reels go viral. Before you know it, their account doubles, triples. 
However, most of their new audience is only there for the street photography. So when they post world-class wildlife photography, no one cares because that's not what they signed up for. I know another person who, he's a photographer and he started a new account. He posted a couple of reels which were more kind of travel-y style. They went viral, got millions of views. His account went to like 50, 60K. The problem is no one cared about his photography. They signed up because they thought they're signing up to a travel account, not to a photography account. So of course, when he posted his work, no one cared. So he actually deleted it because he said, well, what's the point? So avoid going viral unless the thing that you're gonna go viral for is exactly what you want to be known for. If you're a street photographer, you wanna go viral for that exact thing, okay, try it. And also avoid becoming an overnight success because anything that's worthwhile takes a long time to build. This one I've already mentioned a couple of times, but let me mention it again, and that is following trends. By all means, follow Instagram trends and photography trends. Just don't get to a point where the trend becomes your entire photography style or your identity. I've seen it before where someone got into a certain type of creative night photography, and then I think it was like a steel wool thing. I remember a while ago in London, if you took a piece of steel wool, lit it, moved it around, slow shutter speed looks quite cool. It does look cool. A few photographers made that their entire style, entire thing, because it was popular. Of course, when that all died down, so did their accounts and their photography, and they've disappeared off the face of the earth. So try trends, just be careful of making a trend your entire identity and your entire photography style. Avoid posting too much and too often. I know there's some guru in Bali who's telling you that content is king, you need to be posting every 10 minutes. If you're not posting, you're dying in all of this, right? Nonsense. In my experience, the sweet spot with Instagram, for example, is around every three days. If I post every single day, I can literally watch the engagement of each subsequent post dropping, and it gets to the point where I'm getting 20% of the engagement. If I just back off, give it five, six days and then post again, things go back to normal. With YouTube, it's about once a week in my experience. So I know it's tempting to post as often as possible because you think the more you post, the more chances of your account going viral or something like that happening. In my experience, it's the opposite. Now, for some people it might be different, I can only speak from what, uh, how it's happened to me. So yeah, avoid posting too often and too much. Now this one might rub some people up the wrong way, but it is true. And that is create for yourself and not for your audience. The reason you started photography is because you created for yourself, you photographed for yourself, you shared it with other people and other people liked it. However, what happens if people like this type of work more than that type of work? Well, because you're chasing the likes and you're chasing pleasing the audience, you're focusing more on what they like. And that might be good, sure, but it also might not be good because it might mean that you're creating for someone else's taste. And that's a slippery slope because what happens if people all of a sudden stop liking that style of work? What, what do you do then? Your voice is no longer yours, it's someone else's. In my experience, creating for yourself is the only time when you make the best work because then you're staying true to what you want to make and not to what other people want you to make. Okay, I promise we're nearly done, only a couple of points left. So, be careful with brand deals. Let's say you want to grow your account, uh, build a following around your work, and that happens. Sooner or later, brands will approach you and offer you substantial amounts of money to promote a product or a service. Be very careful with which products you choose because it can either make or break your channel from a loyalty and respect perspective. Let's say you're a photographer and a dildo company approaches you and says, would you promote this nine inch dildo 
in exchange for £10,000. £10,000 is a lot of money that can pay for new gear, that can pay for a trip to Japan. But you'll still always be that photographer who promoted a dildo on their channel. No one will ever take you seriously. Obviously, this is an extreme example, but I have seen photographers push all sorts of random crap. I'm talking cheap Chinese watches, um, energy bars. One second, there's a motorbike. As I was saying, a few photographers that I follow have been promoting cheap watches, energy bars, and just random stuff. Now, again, it doesn't hurt anyone. If it's a good product, they like it, sure. But does it really fit into what your audience cares about? If it doesn't, then walk away because it's gonna make you look very silly if you're a photographer pushing energy bars or dildos. As your account grows, as your popularity grows and more people follow you and appreciate your work, just keep your ego in check. I've seen a few photographers who let their success, however you want to define it, get to their head. And not only do they now come across a bit brash, but also the quality of their work has gone down because they've become so arrogant about what they do and who they are that they've stopped putting as much effort and attention into their photography and it's either stale on the same level or it's actually gone down. And it's only to do with ego, you know? I've been doing this for a while now, five, six years. I, I could happily say that I'm pretty successful at what I do, both here on YouTube and photography wise. But I know for a fact that I am an absolute amateur and I've still got, well, there's Mount Fuji there. I've still got all of that to climb in terms of skill. And it's a lifetime, lifetime's worth of work. In 20 years time, I'll still feel like I'm an amateur because I'll then have 20 extra years of experience to teach me that I still know nothing about photography. So keep your ego in check, keep your sort of head on the ground, so to speak, in the ground. I don't know what the correct term is, I forgot. But you get the idea. And last but not least, if you enjoy photography, you do it just for the fun, carry on doing that. Don't let anyone tell you that you need to turn into a six-figure side hustle, make tons of money, retire, all that kind of stuff. From all the people that I've met, the happiest ones have been those with good careers, good jobs, and they just did photography on the side for fun and made a few quid here and there as well. So if you want to do photography for fun, there is nothing wrong with doing it for fun. There's nothing wrong with not making six figures a week from photography. Just keep doing it for fun and you'll have a much better relationship with it than trying to become a multi-millionaire overnight just because some guru in, I've mentioned Bali, I've mentioned Dubai, what's another place? I don't know, LA or something, uh, said that you have to become, do. I'm exhausted, it's been a long day. Uh, we've been literally walking all around Mount Fuji and I am done. My girlfriend's shouting at me because we have to get back on the bus. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Leave any comments or things down below. Again, uh, I know this is a bit amateurish. It's very kind of vloggy, but it's the only way I can make videos and still, thank you. Uh, ooh, that's, that's the only way I can make videos and travel and kind of not burn out. I think once traveling stops, it'll go back to something a bit more polished. Right, that's it. Have a good one, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Uh, what a beautiful sunset.